Welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. My name is Chris Brown, and it is our monthly entertainment rundown with our entertainment pundit from New York, New York, Mr. Michael Nichols Pate. Michael, thank you so much for doing this. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. How I mean, <laughs> not New York, New York, more like Greenwich, New York, but I mean, I'll pretend <laughs> I'm in the city. Shit. There, there you go. Uh, we have not chatted in a month on camera. Behind the scenes, we're always chatting. We're always uh, back and forth. How are you? How's life been over the last month for you and busy keeping sane? No, never <laughs> sane. No sanity here. Um, I have been going on. Stop. February is a shitty month because it has exactly 28 days. And then we have a holiday and it is a slow, 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 uh, not slow. What am I saying? I'm so insane. I'm saying it's too fast. Like I have so much work I need to do. And like, and my work is month to month bookended. So I've just been running around like a, like a literal crazy person. Well, we always appreciate you taking your time. And I always say we're going to be an hour, but it's never an hour. It's usually about two. We've got to stop gaslighting these poor people. (laughs) This is going to be two to two and a half hours. Strap in, grab yourself a cold pop. And if, like, if you're if you're on a walk, get ready for a big, long, giant walk of two and a half hours of us shooting the shit about the last 30 days in the entertainment industry. And what a 30 days it was. We are yeah. going to be digesting some of the like for a very short month. You think that this was like the height of entertainment news because everything that is everything happened in February. We had the Oscars, which we're going to talk about. We had the Super Bowl. We had the Super Bowl commercials. We had. Kanye Ye Ye West. Yay. Yay, doing some weird things. We had Britney Spears watch. We had like everything that is anything happened in the last 30 days. And we are going to digest it as we always do on the show in our entertainment rundown section. So I, I guess the biggest entertainment news in Hollywood would be the Oscars. And now they came out at about five o'clock Mountain Standard Time, seven or eight o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, six o'clock Mountain Standard Time, five o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And they were, to me, overwhelming. Now, before we get into the, the digesting of the- Overwhelming? Not over, underwhelming, sorry. Underwhelming <gasps> is the correct words. Now, before we get into- what happened and some snubs and surprises i will say michael and i are going to be taking the march entertainment rundown and doing our and the award goes to predictions so we will be predicting who we think should be winning or who will win the oscars so if you're looking for who our predictions are in this episode stay tuned till next month and we will make sure that is our top priority but michael for you what did you think about the oscar nominations i Okay, I watched them live. Did I you did watch too. Them? You and I, I was so upset. I love Leslie Jordan is my favorite. And was he I drunk? Like, was he drunk? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he like did a couple of poppers and then hopped on this camera because he just kept jumping on Tracy Ellis Ross's cues and she just was laughing because he's just so funny. I... I was here for it and he would say the things and he would say the names wrong and he'd be like, oh shoot, I think I said that one wrong. And I'm like, bitch, obsessed. And Tracy is just cackling. I'm like, who is, this? she must've been like, who is this little hobbit and why is he so funny? Well, I, I found it quite interesting that he got all the tough names. He got like the foreign <laughs> language They did that on purpose. <laughs> and Tracy Ellis Ross got like, Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Kristen Stewart. <laughs> so it was quite funny to hear him try to pronounce the name, the director's name of Drive My Car, which I am not going to try and do that right now. But it was, if you, it's live streamed, it's on YouTube. There will be a link in the show notes. I highly recommend you go and check it out because, like I said, it's an hour and a half of pure entertainment gold from Wesley Jordan. <laughs> it's just was funny. And like they kept cutting to like, high schools or colleges and I'm like what's going on okay you know what I'm kind of here for this it was and it was one of those moments where we were my husband and I were watching it and we like just woken up I was like I'm running out the door I was late to see a client because I was too busy doing the Oscars 
I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm stuck in traffic. My client's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, whoo. Hopefully your client minutes. doesn't I was listen only five to minutes this. late. I was only five minutes late. So it was not like a crazy amount. I, but <laughs> I, I enjoyed I, it. I, I enjoyed it too. And it made me wonder why they didn't have Tracy Ellis Ross and Leslie Jordan host the Oscars because their dynamic for that like 45 minutes was so unique, so entertaining that I went, that's the host. That's the host that you need. I would have, I want more work for Leslie Jordan. I love him. I think he's so funny and he's so whimsical and he, he never gets work. Like put him on an award show, let him be the host. He's so fabulous and fun and He's just chaotic, and we love a good chaotic moment. Now, for those who don't know who Leslie Jordan is, uh, I think the best way to ex- uh, explain Leslie Jordan is is Beverly Leslie from Will and Grace, Karen Walker's arch nemesis. If you haven't seen Will and Grace, watch it because he gives a astounding performance in that show. He's also in Sorted Lives, which is a fabulous movie, a very gay movie. Very fun. Oh, there you go. Um, so I, let's talk about the host, the, the actual host, because a few days after the nominations, they announced the host for the award ceremony would be Regina Hall. Love her. Amy Schumer. Okay. And Wanda Sykes. Love her. Three they all three of them have never hosted the Oscars. Uh, if you watch, I think it was last year or the year before, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been last year. Regina Hall was the very first presenter at the Oscars. She's the one who walked into the ceremony and stepped on stage and started the whole ceremony. So she's back actually hosting this year. Um, it's a different choice. I'm not sure if I would have chosen these three actresses to do it, but I'm giving them, uh, I'm, I'm letting it happen. Uh, I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to jump down uh, Twitter's throat and say, oh, they're bad choices. I think it's going to be interesting. And the fact that there's three hosts instead of just one makes me concerned that it's going to be a dysfunctional shit show. That's my only concern. I think they're trying to do this like the react moment where it's like one and then another and then another. But I, I mean, I don't know. Do we really even need a host? Well, the last two years we haven't had a host and it doesn't seem like much has missed. I think if you're going to have to have a host, it has to be someone who can like carry the jokes because last two years have been very boring. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like you and I haven't gotten on this podcast over the last two years and been like, that was boring. What happened? What's wrong with them? It's because they didn't have a good host. And like, do we need a host? No. If we want a night that's not very boring to watch, we do. I think Regina Hall's fine and will carry the whole show. I think Wanda Sykes is fine and could carry the whole show. Amy Schumer's okay. I mean, I'm not like obsessed with her. I don't think I've truly loved anything that she has done before. But I mean, I think Regina Hall could have carried the whole show herself. Just like I think Tiffany Haddish could carry the whole show herself. I think we need a good comedian there to crack jokes to not be afraid like Ricky Gervais as much as Hollywood blackballed him after he got up there and basically ridiculed them all it was a good award show and it was he was a good host you need someone who's not going to be there like oh my gosh I'm so afraid to make jokes because what if they don't invite me back like well it goes back to like the uh uh I, I, I can't even Jimmy Kimmel right because the last two award ceremonies the Oscars that were hosted were hosted by Jimmy Kimmel uh they took two years off after the whole uh La 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 Land and Moonlight debacle they had one more year with Jimmy Kimmel and then after that they just said nope we're not doing hosts anymore well it was supposed to be Kevin Hart and then Twitter ran him off that's true I apologize that is correct so this is the first one back with host I think you're right. I think you do. You paint a perfect picture there where you said that with people like Ricky Gervais, they don't give two shits, right? They don't give two shits. And they're like, you know what? We're going to make fun of the industry. And I don't want to sit there for three hours and just watch people self-congratulate themselves. I want some entertainment. So I, I, I thoroughly enjoy Ricky Gervais, to be honest. Yet again, he's problematic on some of the things that he says, but who isn't in today's society? So I, I, I hold hope that this is going to be good. 
I I hope that they change up the format that, that they did from last year where there was no music and it was just basically award ceremony, award after award after award. So that's my only concern that it's going to be a shit show with three hosts, but the format that they did last year is going to be the same and it's just going to, it's just going to be a cluster fudge. I, um, I don't know. I'm holding out hope. I think it'll be good. I think, I think that the comedians are two of the three I really do like, and I think it'll be good. I mean, it is, it's, we'll see. We'll see if this is the way they go or what they do. I know they've tried the whole split host thing and it doesn't always work. Um, Q, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler hosting, was it the Golden Globes? Golden Globes. It was right in between Ricky Gervais. And it was, ooh, Oh, that's cute. right. And one did it from New York and one did it, and from, one did LA. it from LA. Yeah. And that it was, was just not a cute situation. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. We will see how the night goes. We will watch me once again win the Oscars party. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, I think the gauntlet has been thrown. Anyone who's watching- You don't watching, come to my Oscars party. Uh, doesn't mean that we're not going to have our own Oscar nomination predictions well, yes. on this show. On the record where you can't scratch out anything right afterwards, it is going to be- Who scratches? Oh. Are you accusing me of ballot tampering? Excuse you. I don't know, but as a Canadian, we've seen you Americans do elections before. <laughs> Snap. Whoa. <laughs> First of all, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Second of all, rude. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the nominations. Let's talk about some of the surprises that were nominated. And now there's a lot of categories and we could probably spend a good two hours just on the Oscars, but we're not. We're yeah. going to stick to the top six categories, director, picture, and the acting category. So best actor, actress, supporting actor, actresses. So if you're looking for us to give us our biggest surprises for makeup, too shitty, you're out of luck, tune into the actual, uh, and the award goes to nomination uh, episode in March. <laughs> so let's start with the, let's start backwards. So let's start with best supporting actress. Was there any surprises or any snubs that you saw? Because I have one. I think from everything that we saw, Judy Dench was one that you and I said should probably get nominated that wasn't going to. Mm -hmm. So I think that was really cool to see that because I haven't seen it yet, but from what you've said, she was absolutely brilliant. I mean, even all the websites are saying she was absolutely brilliant and probably wasn't going to get it because of a couple of other names on there. But I'm trying to think of who I would maybe put in. I, so you, you haven't seen this episode. You haven't seen this uh, movie yet, but I have, and I am raving about it. I can't wait for us to do it on the actual uh, Night at the Movies movie reviews, but Mar Marley Matlin in CODA as the mother, I am sorry. If you have not seen that movie, please go out, buy it, rent it, go to the movie theaters and watch it because Marley Matlin gives an Oscar worthy performance in that movie. And the backstory of that movie, again, we'll talk about it in a movie review when Michael does see it, but the backstory of that movie is so astounding that she, she deserved to get an Oscar for that uh, Oscar nominate nomination for that performance. That's my opinion. That's my biggest snub in the best supporting actress award. I mean, Marley Matlin can do no wrong, so I'll agree with you even though I haven't seen it. That's true. That's true. I love Marley Matlin. I love her so much. I, I <clears throat> But the, the only well issue that I have is I don't know out of the five that were nominated who I would get rid of. That's my concern. Uh, <laughs> controversial hot take by Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, I was going to say that too, but then we wouldn't have had the best, the the first Oscar ceremony to have two couples nominated in the same year. <gasps> uh, let's go to supporting actor. Any surprises or snubs there that you want to talk about? I think seeing Jesse Plemons and J.K. Simmons get nominated, I wasn't too sure if they were going to actually nominate both of them, which 
if anyone has listened to Power of the Dogs review that we both did, Jesse Plemons is so hot and he's so good. And I'm... But the movie is so, so bad. The, movie, the movie's not great, but I, I mean, he did a really good job. This is the issue. Really, mini tangent. The biggest issue with all these Oscar movies is it's a shitty script with talented actors that do a very good job of making a shitty script kind of work. Power of the Dog is a shitty skip with a contri- script with a contrived story that the actors make work. Um, I mean, Cody Smith McPhee is, was expected. Uh, I don't know, supporting actor. I, I So the one I was surprised at yet again, this goes back to the coda. If you're getting a theme here of coda, you will be not pleasantly surprised. You'll be not shocked, I should say, when I come out with my movie review on it. But I was surprised and elated that Troy Kotzer got the nomination for coda for the father in coda because he does an amazing uh performance and uh, this this is where my mind went because i was like i know that guy from somewhere i know he's on something now i'm one of these kids that can remember tv shows from the 90s like that does anyone remember the show sue thomas fbi no i'm too young Anyway, so Sue so Thomas FBI is about a hearing impaired detective who works for the FBI. The, the main character in that, Sue Thomas, is this gentleman's wife. So he is well connected in the uh, hearing impaired community, the deaf community. Uh, and I, I'm so happy that he got the nomination for this because representation matters. And this movie does a fantastic fantastic job at of representing people who might not get represented in movies like this so good job on the oscars for actually being a little bit more diverse this year than in previous years (laughs) oh my god i know we just finished best supporting actress but i totally need to go back to it because i forgot kate blanchett okay was kind of shocked she didn't get nominated that's just a small little train as my brain is now working in a circle I, I'm surprised um, you were. I, I'm surprised you didn't say Ruth Nega. Um, I would you actually? Have, I'm would, actually a little surprised they didn't give it to her. But I think it came down to her and Anjanu. And I think I, I have not seen it yet. But just even from the clips and from everything I have seen of, of King Richard, it's just a better story, and she just does a better job. Um, I haven't seen King Richard yet. And that's no shit. I think Look for Ruth Nega does a brilliant job. <laughs> Ruth Nega does a brilliant job. And I think, you know, for, again, a contrived script with a... So, and that's, this, this is the part where I'm not 100% certain because she might have put in for Best Supporting Actress, actress, but she might have also put in for Best Supporting Actress or Best Actress in a, a motion picture because her and Tessa Thompson in passing both played equal roles in that. So I don't know if they were both supporting actor, both actress. So no, um, cause Ruth Nega has been getting supporting and Tessa Thompson, when she is getting nominations is getting best actress. So I think they, that's how they submitted. So they weren't competing against each other. Uh, okay. Well, talking about best actress, we had a five, uh, well, one that you basically are going to lambast me for because I said it wasn't going to get nominated, but it did. Best actresses, any surprises? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, when I tell you my husband and I had a, a, a visceral reaction when she got nominated for Eyes of Tammy Faye, <laughs> we started screaming. My husband was still in bed. I was like awake, like on my way out the door. And we're like cheering because we were so happy because we just loved it so much. We thought it was such a great movie. Of all the things we've seen, it's been our favorite. It's been the best acted. Um, elated. Fully Elated. So this and is this the is naysayers, Jessica Chastain. The naysayers, sayers, yes. The naysayers said Jessica Chastain could not get nominated. The naysayers were coming for her brand, and her brand was unclockable because she has been nominated. Um, do I think she's winning this award? Not a chance in hell. I, I will agree with that. Um, 
the best actress category there was one big there were it it came down to two different people for that fifth uh, uh nomination was it going to be kristen stewart for spencer and uh for diana the princess of wales or was it going to be lady gaga for house of gucci so that was the biggest not snub surprise because Honestly, there's always great uh, actresses who give great performances out there, but it has to come down to five. So am I surprised that Kristen Stewart got nominated for Spencer? No, because if you remember back to our August episode, I said it is a Oscar nominated performance that she has given. Do I think that she is going to win? Like you said for uh, Jessica Chastain, no. But am I surprised? Not really. Is Lady Gaga a snub? I don't think so either, because at the end of the day, you need to nominate five. This is a hot take. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to be very real. There's been a lot of very good Best Actresses performances. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica Chastain's fantastic. Uh, I watched The Lost Daughter. Olivia Coleman's performance was the only good thing about it, and she always gets nominated. It's like when Willem Dafoe does a movie, he gets nominated, or Tom... Is she the new Meryl Streep? A little bit, I think. I, she, except she wins. Um, Penelope Cruz is a little shocking to see. I'm going to be very honest. I, I, I don't. I haven't seen the movie, so I can't say yes or no to that. I well, I, exactly. I haven't seen the movie, but the movie kind of came out of nowhere. It's the only nomination for it. And don't get me wrong, I love Penelope Cruz as an actress, and I think the movie's probably going to be brilliant. But it also came out like right on the buzzer. So it feels a little like, mm, should this qualify for this year? Um, so I, I got to ask this question, a real, real hot take here. Four white women, one Latinx. Is it because she's ethnic that she got the nomination? I, Did, I don't think so, because Jennifer Hudson easily could have been nominated in this category. Tessa Thompson's been picking up nominations for acting. She could have been in this category. Um, I think I think that there was a ton of other options that could have maybe been put in here. So maybe Penelope Cruz is the best performance there and we're going to see her win an Oscar. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. I will say Kristen Stewart has not been picking up nominations. I'm a little shocked to see her there and not Gaga, who has gotten nominated for everything. Um, but it comes yeah. down to Hollywood loving the Royals. Which, sure, Hollywood does love the Royals. I'm just a little shocked that Gaga did not get nominated just from how universal, not, I guess not universally loved, because someone on this podcast did not love it. Someone hasn't seen it yet. Um, yeah, I'll let y'all decide who's who. And then, so what? I don't want to out anybody. Um, I feel attacked. You I'm using your words in the January episode. I'm feeling very attacked right you now. You should look on, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like with Best Picture having 10 nominees now, I think you could throw 10 nominees in for some of these acting. And I hate to be like, do more, but like, it's always like, we have so many that are like missing or that we could have added or that we feel we're left out. And it's usually the acting categories that I feel need to be maybe a smidge more, maybe not necessarily 10, maybe we could do six, but I think you could have fit a couple of more artists in if you did six or seven. Uh, now let's head over to the best actor because uh, like I said, mine was only Kristen Stewart and Lady Gaga, but here, here and over there. Best actor, we have five uh, nominees and I will be, I'll, I'll say it first and this is going to be very controversial. I think they got it right. I think this is the first category I went, yeah, I can see those five potentially getting nominated. I will say I'm a little shocked not to see Bradley Cooper's name. No. Uh, for anyone oh, we're who gonna wants, fight, we're gonna fight on this episode. So, on that episode. Yeah. So Nightmare Alley is a movie that we are uh, reviewing on Fridays, Night of the Movies movie review. So go to your YouTube channel Friday morning or Friday at two o'clock Mountain Standard Time, so it's four o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, and you will hear Michael and I's hot take on Nightmare Alley. So I highly recommend you go check. We're gonna it out. fight. Yes. The girls are fighting. <laughs> We need to go away from this. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't, I, 
I, I think they did. I think they chose great picks. No, I think it's a great, I think it's a really great lineup. Um, I am very curious how it goes. Yes. This okay, so we have one one leading contender right now who is Will Smith, who's been picking up a lot of the awards. But I think that we have a strong five member uh nomination group here yeah. that Will Smith, while I think is still the front runner, he could potentially get picked off in a late surge of support for one of the other ones. Yeah, I mean, you and I both really loved Andrew Garfield. He also has been getting some of the tchotchkes for it. Um, Benito Cucumber also is a front runner. Denzel Javier Washington, Bardem. Denzel Washington, the tragedy of the the tragedy of the name that we don't say in the theater groups. Um, it's a choice. I've not seen it yet. I've not seen it yet. I I'm excited for it, but. I feel like Denzel's a little bit like Meryl. If he does a movie, they nominate him. Oh, and that's why, I, and that's why I, I, don't, I don't love when they do that. Which is why, like, yeah, Olivia Coleman was good. Did she need another nomination? Was it better than something else that we could have put her in? Denzel Washington, super talented. Could we put someone else in there that, and given them a chance? And I'm not saying put Bradley Cooper in over him at all. But I'm saying, like, we could have put someone in from any number of these movies that maybe, or that maybe would have been a good fit too. And that would have been a really great opportunity to see them. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think, and I haven't seen it yet. I may watch it and be like, whoa, Denzel, baby, you're going to win. But I might, I haven't seen it yet. So I cannot be a full judge yet. We will be reviewing uh, the tragedy of the name that we will not talk in the theater groups, but uh, please tune in later on in March when we do review that movie, because uh, I have some hot takes on that movie as well. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, best director, biggest surprise for me that Dune director Denise Villeneuve did not get the nominee nomination. Uh, yet again, the five that are up there, I would say my surprise that I would have changed out for uh, Denise Villeneuve, the director of Dune, is Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza. Uh, I don't think that was greatly directed. I think it did not, I don't even think it should have been nominated for best uh, picture, but here nor there, let's talk about best director. What about yourself? Um, yeah, I'm a little shocked Dune isn't up there. But again, I think that this may also fall under the same kind of boat of like, it's too small a category. It might need to be bumped up by two or three more more movies or more entries just to kind of fill it out a little more because there's so many great things that are coming out now um contrary to always if you watch our reviews we seem to lambast most of the movies but i i mean i haven't seen four of the five that are nominated so <laughs> I don't know who I would take out. I've tried to watch Licorice Pizza and my husband keeps looking at it and going, oh, no. And I'm like, we have to watch it eventually. It's like got a lot of nominations. He's like, oh, they're going to make me watch it under duress. And so like this weekend, I don't hey, have- we ha We have Bradley Cooper in Licorice Pizza as well. I know. Um <laughs> know it we're gonna watch it eventually and we're gonna watch i do want to see drive my car because it, it's it picked up a lot of nominations for being a international film it did and I kind and, of and it did win that best happening. picture for the toronto international film festival uh that did uh, take top prize there so i when i am not shocked with the rise of movies like parasite I am not shocked that we are seeing more foreign language films in that best picture. And I will even go as far as to say that we are going to potentially see it probably not like next year or the year after probably about 10 years, we are going to see just best picture. We're not going to see best foreign language. We're not going to see this. We're going to see just best picture. No, I think it's moving in that direction. And I think especially with like the rise of how popular squid game was, people are not afraid to watch movies with subtitles. If it's a good, well done movie and the big issue the U.S. movies are feeling very stale, really 
bad scripts with amazing actors that are kind of, eh, it's boring. Like it's boring. Whereas the Parasite was fresh and it was exciting. I watched Minari last year, which was um, half Korean, half English. And it was brilliant movie. There was subtitles. We read the subtitles and it does not impede your viewing experience, yeah. especially when it comes to well-crafted stories. I think we're going to see it probably overtake it or even maybe see more than just one nominee start to creep into best picture. I, at this point, we can pretty much confirm that <laughs> Drive My Car is probably winning international <laughs> film. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I mean, maybe another one of them might creep in. But just from how it typically goes, if you get nominated for both, you normally win international. <laughs> Unless you're, uh, I think the running joke when Lord of the Rings Return of the King was nominated because they spoke elfish so much in the movie that the person who won best foreign language film walked up on stage and said, I'm very happy that elfish isn't a real language or they would have won this award as well because Lord of the Rings Return of the King literally won every award that it was nominated for. It, it Deservedly. <sighs> For those grumble, who are grumble, not, grumble, grumble, <laughs> grumble, grumble, grumble. Let's talk about best picture. The last category that we're going to talk about before oh. moving on. Um, like you said, 10, 10 nominees. Uh, any surprises or snubs here? How the fuck did Don't Look Up get nominated for fucking anything? Thank you. Thank you. I thank you. <laughs> this that should have been being the Ricardos, period. Yeah, I will I will put that out there because. I, the biggest shock out of this whole thing, and anyone who's listened to the Being the Ricardos movie review that we've done knows what we're about to say. Aaron Sorkin wrote an amazing script. He was sure not did. nominated for script. He wasn't nominated for director or picture. This is a tragedy on epic proportions. Like, we need to stop the press. We need to go take our trucks, drive it to Ottawa, protest outside Parliament Hill to ensure that being the Ricardos and Aaron Sorkin gets its dues. Yeah. I just lost about 10 viewers. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the I just other... don't. How did Don't Look Up get nominated? I'm also a little shocked Dune got nominated. I am too. I'm I liked it. I think it was more visuals for me. Well, it got nominated for fucking, I think, like every technical award there is. The one at thing that, that point it does count. The one thing I found quite interesting, and this is where my mind went when I first saw the awards come out, is you look at the best pictures, you look at the two top ad, uh, acting categories, best actor and best uh, actress. They don't match up that much. The only ones that stand out are The Power of the Dog with Benedict Cumberbatch. Not a lot of the other, like Being the Ricardos, Tick, Tick, Boom, King Richard, The Tragedy of Macbeth. Oh, King Richard, sorry, I apologize. Four, three out of the males movies were not nominated. Eyes of Tammy Faye, not nominated. The Lost Daughter, not nominated. Parallel Mothers, not nominated. Being the Ricardos and Spencer, not nominated. Yeah, like, I mean, I think the biggest thing <clears throat> that people are now starting to realize is a fantastic acting performance that was like life-changing doesn't necessarily mean you have the best picture. I mean, I just looked. Dune got nominated in every single technical category other than script. By all definitions, that means it's a very good movie. It doesn't necessarily have the best acting, but visually it's stunning. Costumes are stunning. It sounds very good. It's going to pick up a couple of awards for things when we get the nitty gritty of it. I mean, it got nominated. It's one of the leaders right now in nominations. It, by all intents and purposes, should be a best picture nominee, which to me, I, I, I think I'm still a little stuck in the like, well, the acting performances should be weighted heavier, but I don't think... It is anymore. I don't think it necessarily, especially now that we have such good visual effects and movies that have such good visual effects have such box office acclaim or, or are very popular. Like Dune was very popular. I think this is a movie that people are going to come and root for. And I, I don't think we can count it out for best picture. We might see like another Return Upset. of the King situation. Yeah, We could be. 
which I think is good. I think that the Oscars needs that. You need a lot more movies that are going to get nominated in all the visuals in Best Picture. Like, just because you don't have the best acting performance of the year doesn't mean that you no longer qualify for Best Picture. And I think that's something that, as a society, we all kind of need to get out of our heads. So on nomination day, we'll stick into the Oscars here for a little sure. bit longer, just for a, like a tad bit longer, and then we'll take a uh, commercial break and we'll come back. Yeah, don't um, worry, Kanye is coming. Yeah. So on on nomination day, I listened really intently for any screaming, yelling, celebration from New York all the way here in Alberta. And I didn't hear anything when the nominations for best original song came out and our girl Ariana Grande did not get nominated. So you didn't hear any I cheering? Didn't. <laughs> you didn't? Are you sure you didn't hear cheering? My husband said a slew of profanities <laughs> after about her after. We, we were very happy. Especially when I saw she started picking up nominations for it was when I was like panicking a little. I was like, girl, don't you do it. Do not do it, Academy Awards. I swear for God. Um, I think this might be where we see either Lin-Manuel Miranda. Oh, no, fuck, I don't want to say, fuck it. Either Billie Lin-Manuel Eilish, Miranda Billie or Billie Eilish. Eilish. Billie Eilish. Oscars love a good James Bond film. They do. But this might be where we give. Nope. <laughs> you, I will edit that out. I will bleep it. <laughs> After technical difficulties is now popping up on the screen. Beep. No, no, you can bleep it out. You can literally bleep out what I just said. And no. then, then, uh, so anyway, uh, that is the Oscars. And again, we, we just spent about 40 minutes on that. And as you can imagine, we're totally going to be an hour here, guys. Um, we got to stop gaslighting these poor folk. We'll be right back after a quick message because uh, I have to get a quick drink and. Uh, we'll be right back to talk about some of the biggest. Oddly enough, I have to talk about Ye West or Ye Yay. West, Ye West. So please come back with in about 10 seconds and we'll be talking about some of the biggest celebrity news here in uh, the world. <laughs> Calgary, Edmonton, Vegreville, St. Albert, Drumheller, Medicine Hat, Fort McMurray, and Peace River. These are some of the communities this show has been heard in. By advertising with us, your advert will be heard by countless Albertans and Canadians. Visit the link in the show notes to advertise with us today. Well, that was a great commercial break. I would highly recommend you go over to our Patreon account and donate at least three, five dollars as much as you can, because that helps our show continue to grow. And we have some great new, exciting things coming our way in the next few months. So please tune in, stay, stay up to date with everything that's going on. So head over to Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, follow, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Um, <sighs> A topic of conversation I thought I would never have to have on this show. Michael, what's happening with Ye? I'm, thank you for saying his name correctly. <laughs> so I'm very pleased by that. Um, that that 10 that? second commercial was actually like an hour because Michael and I got into a massive fight over the pronunciation of Ye. So Michael, what's going on with Ye? Um, what's going on is a manic episode. I, we've all been seeing his Instagram. We've all been seeing his, his social medias. Okay. You haven't cause you're not on social medias, but I have been sending you clips and things of it. So yes, you have. <laughs> so let's not pretend like you haven't seen him in skeet fighting. Um, it's just, there's a big manic episode going on right now. He's trying to get back his family. I'm not sure what caused it. So is he divorced his, from Kim? Are oh, yeah, they, they've been divorced for months. But they've been divorced he doesn't want to sign the divorce papers? Is no, that, it's all signed. It's all done. Oh, I thought, I thought I thought I read something like two days ago. Like he was like, I'm not signing it because I don't like uh, the guy who's dating Kim Kardashian right now, who's on SNL, who Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. Yeah. Uh, no, Kanye West... Oh no, he is refusing to sign them. I wonder oh, if she. Oh, you were oh, right. Oh. You, you were right. I will admit when I'm wrong. You were right. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I'm just so, going to sit back and not talk for the next 20 minutes because this is pure glory for the guy who's not on social media right now. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm wondering if maybe she pressed him like, hey, you have to sign these. I, we're done. And that's why he's now gone on this tirade. That makes a little more sense because um, it kind of lines up a bit. But it's just like, it's starting to be dangerous. I mean, he's in a manic episode. He's using his massive platform to essentially attack Pete Davidson, who is, I mean, people are crazy. Look at what happened to Selena. That easily could be something that happens to Pete Davidson in, if, if Kanye doesn't stop. And I mean, he's also terrorizing Kim and he's being very domestic abusive against her, like posting her scre- her conversations with him. And he keeps posting things like, look at what Pete Davidson said to me. He's an, or well, he calls him Skeet. Look what Skeet said to me. And it's literally like, Kanye, I hope you're doing well. You know, I, I don't want this to be a point of contention. I hope one day we can be friends. I would love to meet your children. And then he's like, Skeet is trying to steal my children. It's like, there's a huge disconnect. Even the screenshots of tweets that he's putting on his Instagram to what he's saying on his Instagram. And it's just, it's this manic episode and people need to, essentially his team needs to sit with him and say, look, we get that this is profitable right now. It's putting him in the news and he's got an album dropping and he's got a streaming device dropping that we're going to make $200 on like a person. And, but like someone needs to sit him down and say, dude, you, you are having a manic episode. You, you need to go to an inpatient program. Like it's getting dangerous for him. It's getting dangerous for others. And so many women are, are, have lived this experience and it's, it's scary to see, and it could be potentially very re-traumatizing because it is, it's, it's getting dangerous. It's getting to a very dangerous level with what he's doing. And I, I, I fully think that it's, he's having a bit of a psychotic break right now. He needs to go to an inpatient program. That's the only sensible thing. And someone on his team needs to just say, look, you either go or, or there's no other option. You, you have to go. I also think we need to talk about how Lindsay Lohan, uh, Amanda Bynes, and Britney Spears did less and were instantly placed on a conservatorship. I was going to say, you, uh, you made mention of that on the Block Talk with Michael Block, another podcast that you do on a weekly basis with a, a group of people down in New York, where you talked about a conservatorship. Now, you've been open on this show and on over the last few months that you think that conservatorships, especially the one with Britney Spears, because that's the main, that's the biggest one that's been out in the news recently. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Amanda Bynes is in one. I'm not she 100%. She is in one. She's, okay. in, uh, she's in a weird one right now because yeah she has it's like half conservatorship half not because she controls her finances but mom still controls her medical it's very tricky because amanda Bynes is slowly is what a concert what's going on with amanda Bynes is how a conservatorship is allegedly supposed to go which is once someone starts to be able to take care of themselves again and make good financial and emotional and uh physical health decisions you slowly get back your control. And if that never comes, then that never comes. Granted, I've not followed up on the Amanda Bynes one as recently, but it's. So are you in favor of a conservative ship? Because you, you, you seem to have not railed against them, but you have, you have come out against them on numerous episodes when it comes to Britney Spears. And while they try to be temporary, let's be honest, some people do use them to be more than a hundred percent. So, how do we get help for someone who A, doesn't want it because he just does not want it. And so it doesn't become this long-winded battle where in three months, three years from now, we're saying save ye or save Kanye or whoever they have changed their name to at the time. That's where it's really tricky because ideally conservatorship is supposed to be what that is. Yeah. It's supposed to be the, you are clearly not able to, make healthy, safe decisions in your life right now, we have to have someone else be involved. And the issue is like what happened with Britney Spears, her family used it to rob her blind and profit off of her and and steal millions from her and force her to work. She allegedly was too chaotic to control her own life, but could go on tour for 
years on end and basically in work for years being forced to by her father. I mean, conservatorships are supposed to work. And again, I've not followed up on the Amanda Bynes one, so I don't know much other than the last time I read about it at all. She had full financial control. I don't know if that's been taken away. I don't know where what the state of that is. Amanda Bynes is doing very well compared to how she was when she was in, when she was placed on it. I just one I wanted to. I, I'm not super in love with conservatorships, but I think because they don't work the way you're supposed to, especially when celebrities are involved. But I will say we have to kind of point out the hypocrisy with what he's doing versus what these other individuals were doing and how it's not equaling up. I mean, what he's doing is so much more harmful, dangerous, aggressive to others versus what like Amanda Bynes was doing. So I'm going to play devil's advocate for a little bit here. I hate that. I I, I hate devil's advocate, but but, go ahead. But you have to ask the question because you're saying it's worse. It's got to be, it's like what's happening is so much worse than why the reason why Britney Spears. Now, I'm one of these people that looks at the glass half empty at all times. So I'm always looking at the worst side of things. But to look at it on the other end is he hasn't harmed himself. He is saying- Neither did Britney Spears. Here's the thing. He is saying things that he should not say if it does get to a point where he is injuring other people, the law can technically come in and stop that. They can technically arrest him. Now, I'm not saying that is the right scenario, but if I'm, if you're making veil threats to Pete Davison or Skeet or what Skitter or Skittles or whatever you want to call them, is there not a point one time when Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian just have to say, okay, we have to get a restraining order. We have to get this. We have to get that because the the law can technically divorce you even though Kanye West doesn't sign the papers you can still technically get a divorce in the eyes of the public i, I just thought, i feel like we jumped to conservatorship conservatorship just on and the I'm not, back. and i'm not saying and no i'm not saying kanye needs to be on a conservatorship yay, and i want to get yay, that 100 yay yay, <laughs> yay. I, i'm not and i'm not saying he needs to and i want to make that very clear i'm just pointing out the hypocrisy yes. of Amanda Bynes was fucking t- tweeting to Drake to have sex with her and was experimenting with drugs, which yeah, I, I could literally go down the street and find a couple of high school students doing the same thing. Like, I, like what he's doing versus what, and like, that's where I'm like, I'm no, not necessarily saying he needs to be on one because I've seen people that need one and it's difficult to get. I'm just, I'm frustrated with the fact that it is super harmful. And I'm frustrated with the double standard. That's the biggest thing. The double standard is uh, is atrocious. It's very sexist. And we also have to look at with, with, yay, he may not, Kim might go try and file a restraining order and won't get approved. And that's just the way that this, I mean, there's a number of women who have death threats, texts, screenshots from their ex to try and get a restraining order and the judge goes well they're not coming near you so it doesn't matter yeah they, like they don't, it's, they don't come near you until you're dead yep and it's not i mean essentially what needs to happen someone needs to take his phone he needs to go to inpatient he needs to willingly go to inpatient since you cannot force him to and if it continues and if he continues to go down this route it might need to be a situation where a conservatorship steps in and i'm not oh i don't like to use that i don't like to use that as the jump to go in, but something needs to change here because it's getting harmful, period. And there, and it, there's now being a very clear double standard of what, what men can do and not be put on a conservatorship versus what women can do to not be put on a conservatorship. I have spent the last 15 minutes talking about Yay West, and I thought I would never have to say these words, but no matter what, I hope he gets the help he needs. A hundred percent. And there's a peaceful resolution to this entire situation. So to each their own, love them or hate them. Just if he needs help, I hope he gets it in the timely fashion. Yeah. And I, like, I, I'm not like a huge fan of any of the parties involved. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, I just, it's happening live in front of us. Like what was happening with Brittany live in front of us. And I think 
it's something we it's something that it's just it's frustrating i'm just frustrated do you think people <laughs> are too too uh, gun shy now to jump to the conservative ship on anyone now because what they saw with britney spears no i think and i think he had an episode four or five years ago when he canceled all his tours and he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when that was when the um that he could have been easily i mean britney spears wanted a break and got put on one he could have easily have been put on one there and they still didn't it's because men can get away with more things than women can and he ran for president garnering one percent of the vote (laughs) um speaking of britney spears came out earlier this week on Monday, as this is airing on Thursday, came out on Monday that uh, she assigned a undisclosed amount of money to write a tell-all book for Simon & Schuster that will be released in the upcoming year, year and a half, depending on how long it takes her to write it. Now, we have seen Jamie Lee Spears write her tell-all book. Trash. Go on every single daytime talk show that will let her on. and Fuck Jamie Lee and we expect her to be on The Masked Singer with Rudy Giuliani. Fuck uh, her. Uh, are you excited for this? Because I can tell you right now, I am not one to read biographies for, about celebrities, but this might be the first one I might actually go out and buy just to read the shit show that she's been put through for the last few years. I think it's time for Britney Spears to profit off this conservatorship, <laughs> Period kind of segueing in she was fucking unjustly placed on one i think it is fully wholeheartedly time to have her you know get some damn money from this fucking thing i cannot wait to buy it even if it sits on my bookshelf for the next 40 years because let's be honest there's people who collect books and people who read books and they don't they're not a venn diagram um occasionally very very occasionally they are but they're usually two circles and i'm fully aware i may collect i buy books and collect them versus reading i have a stack of books that i have to read still i will be buying this one i kind of really do want to read it so it might motivate me to actually go in and read it but i just more so want her to get the money i so there's there's two parts of me right now that are thinking okay I want it to be juicy, right? I want it to fucking tell all. I want it to just be no holds bar, like go after Diane Sawyer, go after Barbara Walters, go after it probably Justin. will be. But the other half of me goes, you know what? I want her to be the fucking fuck you guys. You have you're nothing to me. This is my life. This is what I want to tell. And you have you're so insignificant to my life and what has happened to me that I don't even need to give you an inch of column space in my book to, like, I, th- that's the other part of me that's saying that of like, just rise above it, Brittany, and just be like, screw you guys, I'm gonna write the book about my life, and you have you are a fleeting memory in my life compared to what I've been through. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it before on this podcast, the number of documentaries that were made about her that other people who didn't even know her did and got millions of dollars doing. Like, it's time that she writes something where she can get some damn money off this thing because a lot of people have become very wealthy from it, from telling her story of being trapped. And and you and I talked about, I think it was actually, in De- it might have been December's or it might have been January's episode where we talked about, What's next for Britney Spears? This is perfect for her, right? Because this sets her agenda for the next few years. This is, I'm writing the book. I'm going to put it out there. And then right after that, you all read it. Here's the new album. And then here's the new tour. Yeah. And then here's the new fragrance. Yeah. I. She is smart. I give her that. Like, for someone who's been under a conservative she's ship, she's been, been she's been planning this from day one and i give her credit because writing a book right after that because everyone's still talking about it right because everyone is still talking about britney spears you tell a write, a write all book in a year and a half when it comes out everyone's gonna buy it then once oh. that dies down another six months here's an album she has set up her life to be the like golden the child next- four or five years probably 
And I definitely think, you know, I've been saying it from the jump. Britney Spears needs a break. She needs to just do her own thing under her own power. Great. Go write the book. Give me the album. Give me the tour. So ready. But honestly, if she gives us the book and that's all we ever get from her, uh, good for her. Preach it, girl. Like, Preach good for it. her. That, it's her decision. Um, speaking of uh, Britney Spears, uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> Because she, she played a strange the, transition. She she was at the Super Bowl halftime show one time. Totally. Was she? I'm 90% sure she did the Pepsi ad with Beyonce and all that. Like, um, and Christina Aguilera. I don't know. We have on the t- on real time confirmation of this as I'm, I'm making, literally pulling it up as we speak. Uh yeah. So when I, I'm assuming she did, did it with this? like Backstreet Boys. Yeah, in sync. In sync, yeah. Look at that. Uh, it was a it was Aerosmith and in sync. And she came and on. And she hopped on with them and Nelly and Mary J. Blige. So uh transition. Look at that. Look at look at me. Look at me just look at you in the transitions today. <laughs> so Super Bowl. We had the 51st uh Super Bowl or 52nd or 59th or whatever number it is in New World. I don't know, sports. <laughs> Yeah, go go team. Go team. Uh, uh, for anyone who did not see the Super Bowl uh, puppy bowl that the Brown Miranda household did, we have it up on our YouTube channel. Go check it out. It is highly entertaining where our dogs chose the wrong winning team for that. But everyone turns into the Super Bowl, not for the game anymore. They tune in for one reason, one reason only, and that is the commercials. What $7 million commercial did someone put out? Were there any commercials that you were happy to see or were you like, oh my God, this is so amazing because there's two that I want to talk about, but I want to get your opinion first. So, so <laughs> let's see. Um, me and the gang had a little Super Bowl gathering. There was eight homosexuals there. <laughs> Four watched the game. Four went in the totally other side of the house in <laughs> that and drank wine and gossiped and danced to Ricky Martin. Which side was I on, Chris? I would make a very inappropriate joke right now, but I'm not going to. I'm assuming you went into the other room and kikied with your girls. Yeah, we had <laughs> the damn kiki. So I did not watch anything but the halftime show. And that as movie commercials were coming out, I would be getting them texted from someone who will remain anonymous on this very podcast, letting me know about things. Caterpie? Yes, yes. (laughs) It was Pikachu, actually. Um, So I did see a couple. and, And then afterwards, my husband was like, oh, you have to watch the Rocket Mortgage commercial. As someone who just bought a house, I can fully wholeheartedly say that was my experience. It was Anna Kendrick and it was about Barbie trying to buy her dream home with rocket mortgage. And it had like different people cash off or Carl comes in to try and buy it and uh, house flipper Felix. And it was so funny. And I'm not going to lie. My husband and I watched that like six times and every time just cackled. I was like, this is a little too real. I'm a little traumatized. My PTSD from home buying was a rose. It was brilliant though. Um, Okay, so I have not seen that because as any Canadian who's listening to this knows, we do not get the American commercials here in Canada. Um, Fascinating. Yeah, we've never gotten them. They, They cut to Canadian commercials all the time. So anytime that the Super Bowl is on, we never see any of the commercials until they're uploaded to YouTube or until we borrow them from the internet. Uh, so, on YouTube. well, before YouTube, right? Before YouTube was YouTube. So you had to figure out another yeah. way to find them. So, um, we never, I never got to see them live. I will be honest, I did not watch the Super Bowl. My husband was making me watch the figure skating for the Canadian Olympics. Oh. So, we were that's, all excited. That's a true blue <laughs> gay household right there. Yeah. Um, I sent that to my brother and he responded to me by saying, can you be any more gayer, Chris? Stop it and watch the uh, Super Bowl. Elton John once performed at the Super Bowl, so you have to, perf- you have to watch it. So anyway, and- 
exactly. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not watch the Super Bowl, but I did watch the YouTube clips of all the Super Bowl commercials, and there's two that I'm so excited to talk about. One, we'll start off first because this is Mikey's uh, wheelhouse, and this has nothing to do with me. I'm I'm not actually looking forward to it, to be honest. Is the Lord- you hate Lord of the Rings? Yes, Lord of the Rings TV show via Amazon. Their first unofficial teaser trailer came out, and I, Mikey, basically just take it away. I'm just not even going to say anything. Go. Ahead. I'm excited <laughs> for this. I I've been needing something to fill the Game of Thrones sized hole in my heart. Wheel of Time. <laughs> yes, which Wheel of Time has been doing that, but. I really love Lord of the Rings. I grew up reading the books. I've reread them way more times than I will ever admit publicly to anyone. Um, and I love it. I'm excited for the TV show. I love the movies. Uh, contrary to others, I do think that Return of the King deserved every Oscar it got. Um, shade. <laughs> we need the rattlesnake. Uh, okay, Cher. <laughs> shade. Oh. Whoa. Um, I, I'm excited. It's either going to be phenomenal or trash. There's not going to be an in between. And I, I that's that's my concern. It, again, uh, if you uh, have listened to this show before, you know my opinion on very popular things. So I will not watch this until it is free. And then on top of that, like someone hands it to me, and I do not have to buy it, and I do not need to. Well, it's on Amazon Prime. Do you have Prime? Yeah, but that means I still have to like go on to Amazon Prime unless someone. Oh my god! I have to click on the button and put my login information in, and oh, I'm so tired. I can't do that. Uh, you're coming for me hard today, aren't you? Sure am. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get notes about bullying you this time. It's fine. yeah. Thank God, because I I hate when I get the. <laughs> Um, the other one that I'm really excited for this. Okay, this is me jumping on the popular bandwagon here. Ironic, but Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, <laughs> I have been looking. I, I'm a massive Doctor Strange fan. Marvel can do no wrong when they cast Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. I am looking forward to this. Elizabeth Olsen in it. And I am so happy, even though that he says he's not in it, that Patrick Stewart's voice, even though he says, oh, it's not him. He was somewhere else during the Super Bowl. Bullshit! Exactly. Okay, Andrew Garfield, we all know it's you. We all see that it's you. You can just agree to it, even though you're under like nine bajillion NDAs. Fuck off and just tell us the truth. I'm just a little shocked that they put that in the commercial and didn't let that happen in the theater the only reason i think they did that and this is this is my this is my gambit here is i think it leads to more surprises than we anticipate now we like talk tom cruise's iron man exactly we've talked numerous times on this show about the the amount of people who are going to be in this movie and they're already releasing that it's going to be bigger than avengers endgame when it comes to the amount of marvel characters in it so i will put dollars to dime that this movie is going to be amazing. And by just leaving like teasing Patrick Stewart, it has teased everyone to think, okay, who else is going to Illuminati? Here? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be Illuminati. We're going to see Reed Richards. We're going to see Iron Man. We're going to see fucking like Namor in it. We are going to see the who, who's who. And it's going to be so awesome. I am going to, I will go to break my movie going curse and I will go to the movies and watch this movie in theaters. And I do not like doing that. Oh, oh. I'm excited. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be a really good television program. Girl. No, I'm excited. I am excited for it. I just, like I said, I'm a little shocked that they did the, I, they, Spider-Man, they gave us goddamn nothing. Yeah. Well, and the fact that you, you, I literally said, how'd you feel about Patrick Stewart? And you said, what do you mean? So you didn't catch it the first time you watched it. No, I had to rewatch it. And then uh, I, and my friend, my friend at the Super Bowl party, we, we watched it the first time. We're like, Ooh, this is really good. And then when you sent that, I'm like, what do you mean? And then we rewatched it with like not Ricky Martin also playing, and like I'm like, and we re- and when it got to that part, we were like, oh, 
That's Patrick Stewart. <gasps> like, obsessed. Ready. But also, like, they should not have just given us, like, give us nothing. Make me, don't tell me anything. And that's what the Marvel movies are great at. All modern movies tell you everything in the trailer. You almost don't need to go see the show. Whereas Marvel movies literally say, oh, you want to see our movie? Go fuck yourself. Come see it. Don't watch the trailer because we'll give you nothing. And if you know Marvel, you understand that what's in the movie trailer doesn't always translate into what's in the actual movie because there are scenes in the They'll Avengers, with us. the Infinity War movie, the trailer that was not in the movie. And they're like, where is this? Is this in another movie? And they're like, no, we just threw it in there just to screw with you people. And like, you yep. can't do that. So maybe Patrick you sure not yeah. in it. <laughs> I think that one's pretty set. I don't think that you can just have his voice randomly like, because they don't, they don't, they didn't own that voice. Yeah, they do. Oh, they do now. You're right. They own Disney everything. Disney fucking owns everything. The only thing they don't own is Spider-Man and it pisses them off. It sure does. Because Sony says, oh, sorry, our bag of money is over here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, speaking of Marvel, I just want to quickly make a mention to our uh canadian marvel actress hailing from the great city of calgary alberta and evangelic lily evangelical lily uh has come out in support of the trucker convoy here in canada uh when michael sent me this i went your point <laughs> the canadians already knew this were, this girl was uh problematic i'm surprised though that disney hasn't shut that down because when uh, Black Panther's, uh, uh, I forget her name, this is going to bother me right now. The main, uh, the, the sister to Black Panther uh, came out being anti-vax, like early on in the pandemic. Like Tisha Wright. There you go. Disney basically shut her down and said, stop it or we're kicking you out. The fact that Disney's letting uh, Lily go on like this makes me think that maybe Lily doesn't survive Ant-Man and Wasp 3 the quantum mania. So I would be highly suspect. Look at the, these are the picture perfects. <laughs> Days of our lives. Bold and the beautiful. I can't stand you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay, we, we have been talking for an hour and a half and we have like three things that we want to talk about here. Uh, I, 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 let's, let's do this as quickly as possible. The comebacks. In the month of February, it seems like everyone has been rebooting something or other, and we are excited about that. We have, I'm not sure if Michael's excited about this, but it is getting rebooted because I think the 1980s called and they want their movie back and the 19, or 2010s called, they want their TV show back. But Teen Wolf, the movie is coming back. Okay, Michael. So oh, <laughs> ick. Excited! I love that show. That was my college show. We watched it all. We'd get together. We'd watch it. We love that show. There's a bit of drama going on because Arden Cho, who is the only woman of color on the cast um, as a series, a main series character, uh, basically got offered half the salary that everyone else said had been offered. And so basically said, fuck you. Uh, Dylan O'Brien is not doing it. And then Tyler Hecklin is currently in talks, but everyone else is coming back. Very excited to see it. I, I hope they remedy the Arden show situation now that everyone knows it, but I don't know. It's mem TV. They're not necessarily known for doing the right thing. That's true. I, I never watched the series. I watched the, uh, Michael J. Fox because he's Canadian movie. I watched Teen Wolf 2. And then after that, I went never watching a Teen Wolf anything ever again. So here we are. Uh, yeah is weird star trek 4 uh in the series of chris pine and zachary quinto is back uh I, i'm excited uh this is being rumored to be going on since star trek 3 but star trek 3 beyond kind of fucked over the franchise and they're bringing it back maybe it's gonna be a great relaunch but i highly doubt it i think there's a lot of star trek tv series that are going on right now and i think they're just trying to capitalize on that yep <sighs> futurama Mac Rogan is back with another rendition of Futurama. I am not looking forward to this. I think you you can only beat a nail so much until you have to stop because it's flush. And Futurama was the very first time I got canceled. You just need to move on. Uh, I understand. Well, there's a lot of people. Has it been have... canceled before? Yeah, it's been canceled twice before, and it's been brought back twice. I just don't. And it's not a show for me. Yeah uh dora the explorer 
the movie was a flop, but they think HBO Max thinks that Dora the Explorer, the live action TV show, is going to be much better. So with that same girl? I don't know that. They have they've just said that they're gonna start production of it here soon. Um I loved that movie. I had so much fun watching that movie. That movie was not necessarily for the children's. It was for young adults that kind of grew up with Dora, I think. Yeah, I just didn't like it. Uh, okay. uh, live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies are coming back. Uh, HBO Max seems to be doing this whole... We, we love the 90s and we want to reboot it and make it so everyone loves it today. Maybe they can do that with Arthur, the aardvark, because that is last episode aired this week. I'm still shook. Okay. Anyway. And uh, there was one more that I wanted to talk about, but I completely forgot what it was. And now it's going to bother me. Oh, this is going to bother me. Do we want to talk about the All-Star Shore while you... Yeah, you talk about All-Star Shore, and I'm going to think about this because this is bothering me because it was a really good one. I thought you would have liked it too. Um, All-Star Shore, MTV has decided they want to also jump on the bandwagon of people doing random reality competitions that are like crossing over. So they're having their very own Marvel crossover moment happen called All-Star Shore. It is a competition show with people from Jersey Shore. Jordy Shore, Acapulco Shore, MTV The Challenge, Love Island, or Love is Blind, one of those, and then RuPaul's Drag Race. So I, do we think Juju B is on this? Yes. Do we think Juju B is going to be on it? Yes. Do we think that there's probably going to be, is Shangela going to be on it? Probably. No, I think it's going to be, I think Juju B is a good pick. Or they might throw random ones on there that like went home Ms. early. Like, Miss Cracker. Victoria Miss Portland. Cracker. No. But like, I am so excited. Like who from Jersey Shore? What, Angelina. Probably Angelina and Snooki. I just can't wait for Jersey Shore to meet Jordy Shore because the Jordy accent is so thick. And the Jersey accent is so thick. You will need subtitles the entire time. And everyone's going to say, what the hell are we watching on Paramount Plus? Screw I'm you excited. guys from Paramount Plus for not giving Evil Season 2 to us Canadians. Still? Still! <sighs> anyway. I don't know. I'm excited. I... I'll watch it because I'll need to understand what the fuck you're talking about. Because I'm going to send you random gifts and things and you won't know my moment. I can't even, when we get to it, I can't always send you the euphoria stuff, but we'll, we'll talk about euphoria in a minute. Yeah. Um, but before we do that, we're going to take another quick commercial break because I have to go get another drink and then we have to fight over the next uh, probably topic. And then we'll be back for about another 20 minutes and then we will wrap up the, the two hour show that was, Totally promised to be an hour, so we'll be Nobody right. promised an hour. Stop gaslighting. I, I will always gaslight my show. It's my show, and as oh. Katya and Trixie would say, it's our show. We can do whatever we want. Mm. Trademark uh, RuPaul Wonder of World. I'm not, <laughs> like, please World do not of Wonder? Yeah, sure, Wonder of World. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back in a few seconds. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to Patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Ah, uh, welcome back. Uh, that was another great episode. Again, if you want to head over to Patreon and donate $3 to the show and help this continue on, if you like listening to Michael and I chat about absolutely nothing, and by the end of it, come up with world peace, then please donate $3 today because we will solve world peace on the show at least once Don't in Don't put lifetime. that on me. Don't put that on me. That's a lot of work. Hey. Nobody, you know how we solve world peace? Everybody go to therapy. Hey, if, if anything happens, if Monday holds true, Russia is invading Ukraine. We're going to Let's war. not put that in the world. <laughs> I can't. 
anyway, um, so we have a lot to talk about what we are watching this month because uh, this we are off the Oscars. So Oscars are officially an uh, Oscars Olympics <laughs> are officially over and we are back to our regular scheduled program. Things that were waiting for their winter debut after the Olympics are going to be starting to roll out here soon. Um, there's one. Uh, I, I can't put my time. I think I need to just, I just need to stall for time because the longer Michael has to wait to talk about this at the show, the, the, the more happy I'll be. So I, I just want to make sure that people know that there are a lot of things that we're going to talk about over the next few minutes, <laughs> but oh, can we not, you, I can't, this is just too much. So There's a lot of good, Michael, there is a show that came out on Sunday. I think it was their season finale if i'm not mistaken nope no it was their penultimate 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 episode so the so next week this, this sunday will be the season finale of euphoria uh now if you haven't seen this uh show michael is going to tell you why you need to watch it because he has been trying to get me to watch it for the last few months go ahead michael. i'm basically about to also drop some spoilers so if that is something you care about skip a teeny bit <laughs> Um, so great show. It is probably, I see why, cause it took me a while. I have not seen season one until mid to late January, or I think last time we talked, I had just started watching season one. So being brilliant. This show is so good. It is insane how good it is. Um, Zendaya is going to win the Emmy for her, for episode five, where she basically goes on like a withdrawal 24 hours. And it I've never seen acting so fucking brilliant, like Zendaya in episode five and even episode six too, though she wasn't the centerpiece of that episode. Um, this last episode, one of the side characters who's super quiet, she's the good girl, she's the like nice one. She wrote a play about her life and about her friends and her family and so this episode was the play that we've been teasing like the whole time and it's causing drama. And it ended with a performance of I Need a Hero by Ms. Bonnie Wright. And it had all of the football players. There's one really problematic character named Nate. He's a horrible human being. He is some flavor of homosexual and he's abusive and aggressive and I mean, threw a gun in one of the characters face and it's just very problematic his whole arc Lexi's tale has him and his football friends doing lewd acts of homosexuality to Bonnie Raitt's I Need a Hero in the football locker room oh my god it was so fucking good the whole play my jaw was just on the floor and like you seeing all the different characters how they interact and how they like are watching the play most of her friends start out being like, whoa, what the fuck, this play is fucking about us, which I'm sure you've seen the meme circulating on the TikToks because that's super popular right now. But like, for those who aren't on TikTok, like myself, which I found out, spoiler alert, my father's on TikTok. So you've just guaranteed me never to be on TikTok ever in my life. But it, it like everyone but her sister, who's currently dating the abusive asshole who plays Eric Dane's child, it was, whoa, the whole thing was, I don't even know how to talk about it. It was so good. And it was part one of part two. They're making the finale, like the continuation of the play. So we are going to get more of Lexi's great show. I need that show to happen. They also know high school has this kind of a budget. So Euphoria is very much not a real show. So, um, so before our uh, interview, uh, our episode started to record, uh, we were talking about this because we uh, Michael wanted to talk about it. I, I, he asked me if I'd seen it. I said, no, I hadn't seen it, but I'd seen social media tweets because we are still on social media via the show, but we're not on it actively as much as we used to be. Um, and I, I, I said to him that, and he kind of like, like lost it over this, but that one scene where they did Holding Out for a Hero, I Need a Hero by Bonnie Raitt, did more than five seasons of Glee. And, sure did. And I, 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 
I might just watch that scene because I want to see what it's all about. But no, the whole episode did more than Glee ever did. Oh, really? Yeah. You should, you have to watch the show. Please watch the show. I know you don't love Zendaya like I do, but like, you have okay. to. Here, here's the thing. I, I will watch the first two seasons of the show on one condition. Sure, what's the condition? You come on the show is after I'm done, whether it be March or April, and we take a full hour to digest that show. Done. Okay. It is scheduled. I am putting it in the calendar. I will start tomorrow, March 1st, and I will binge the shit out of that show until I'm done. Because by the time I get to the final episode, which is airing on Sunday, I will have caught up and we will, we might have Michael on two times next month because I want to digest this show and maybe just maybe I might love it. I, it might be the best thing ever, but I will watch it only on the assumption that you come on the show to talk about it for one hour. And I will do it. I one hour, babe, do you want two hours? I will do it. Okay. So please tune in sometime through March because we will have that episode airing where we talk about euphoria and talk about it on an open, no judgment, no bullying perspective. Okay. Bullying. Nobody bullies. (laughs) What? No, we just say very pointed things at each other sometimes. And then we get accused of bullying. And then like 10 seconds later, we get accused of sleeping together. So literally that is our life. (laughs) If we're not bullying, it's a journey. It's a journey journey through life. Oh, other things that have come out that we have watched or I'm watching, I guess. Mrs. Maisel restarted season four. Last season too, right? What? It came out today. This is the last season. (gasps) Oh, no, don't tell me that. I'm 90% sure. It might have been the last um, season or it got picked up for one more season and a finale. I'm going to cry, but it's a brilliant show. Um, well, one of their main characters is going to have to die soon. Lenny Bruce. He dies in life. and He's a character on the show. So, so maybe that's what they're... Yeah. And then Drag Race is also consuming the life. Uh, season 14 and UK versus the world. And then another Which, little show yeah. that yeah. unfortunately the devil who walks among us is on it. Uh, Sweet Magnolias, one of my favorite shows on Netflix has had a new, has its second season. And we don't know if it's getting a season three though. It ended on a cliffhanger. It was such a, it's such a fun, like, wonderful little show even though the devil's on it who's the devil jamie lee in um i'm gonna really burst your bubble here after just making you say that name out loud so uh it came out today that marvelous the marvelous miss mazel will be picked up for a fifth and final season okay so i guess after two years of not putting out anything I think we have two years of uh, shows left in us, and that's plus the story doesn't need to go on. I like <laughs> as much as I love it and would love a hundred seasons. We need to stop this whole thing of like, well, it's super popular, so let's keep putting seasons out because then it gets bad, and eventually everything gets bad. Yep. So AKA when it's good, Modern Family, Seinfeld, Friends, Frasier, all those shows that have ever was been Friends out. ever good. They had that one episode, you know, that last one when it ended. <laughs> oh yeah. When they turned their keys in and then it was done. The credits was a great scene. Great performances. Um, like, <laughs> yeah, every show eventually reaches that point where it just either it ends on a really shitty note because it just becomes really bad. Like Glee started so good and it ended poorly. I like what the good place did. They went in with a story and they ended it was super popular. It ended right when it needed to. And like Shit's Creek did that, ended when it needed to. They could have made six, seven more seasons and it would have tipped. Yeah, but Dan Levy wanted to go to uh, America and make his money there. And what Which has is he fine. Do- what has he done since Shit's Creek? Oh, that's right. He's America. done a couple of movies. Yeah, but not good ones. 
Well, he hasn't, he's been writing. He inked a deal with uh, Netflix to do writing. ABC. ABC. Oh, I thought it was Netflix. ABC. Oh, anyways. Uh, we may see his stuff come out next year. So what else would also is returning? American Idol is coming back this week. Pass. No. Uh, the Masked Singer is going to be probably airing here shortly. Uh, for anyone who I... has listened to this, Rudy Giuliani is supposedly the first person who gets kicked off. We have people walk out. Dear God. Oh, no. I don't know if I'm going to be watching this season because of Rudy. I'm going to be real. Oh, let's be honest. You'll still watch. I don't know yet. I have not decided yet. Not decided yet. Uh, and yeah, we have a lot of things. The one that I'm looking forward to is The First Ladies uh, by Showtime. Uh, the story of Eleanor Roosevelt, Michelle Obama, and uh, Betty Ford. Uh, they're, they're, they're like the... What? Betty Ford? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm just sort of going through the amount of messages that Michael and I send back and forth to each other on a regular basis. I think that's... A, oh, I think that's all. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to mention this for my mother because she does listen to us, I hope. She tells me she listens to it. So if she doesn't, then she knows. If, Hi, mom, please call me if you actually hear this. That way, if she doesn't, then therefore I know that she hasn't listened to this episode. Shade. Um, it's not a TV show, but it's a movie. Um, Elvis. Elvis, the biopic is coming out. Oh, yeah. I am looking forward to this. Like there's no tomorrow. Uh, Tom Hanks looks amazing in it. And that's about it, I think. Over Did you? Did you watch Pam and Tommy? I watched the first three episodes. I didn't mix- love it. I didn't. I wasn't. Okay. I was. Did you? I've not seen it yet. I was waiting for your review. It. Because mm. if you didn't like it, then I knew I would probably love it. <laughs> so I watched. So I watched the first three episodes that were released. So uh, I, I haven't watched the others, but. Nick Offerman and Seth Rogen are probably the best two performers in it. And if oh, you like, so hot. I was gonna say, well, if you like Nick Offerman, if you think he's hot, I would highly recommend you watch this movie. Then so, Sebastian Stan doesn't personify Tommy Lee to me, and I, seen his penis yet? I haven't. Lily James does, but you see his ass a lot. Lily James. As, as a Canadian, I respect my Canadian actress, Pamela Anderson. I don't get Pamela Anderson from her. So you tell, you, you, you watch it and you tell me. Okay. I will try and go on that journey soon. So uh, now I was not preparing Michael for our last topic of discussion, but because of, <laughs> because of such the overwhelming amount of feedback that we got in January from our from our amazing amazing small segment of the show where we talked about a certain topic <laughs> I want to bring back and we will be doing this every single month until no, Michael won't. yells at me no we won't. but cue up the music because it's where in the world is Jason Derulo. <laughs> so, Michael, Jason, Jason Derulo. 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 because you got to say it that way every single time. Um, what's your thoughts? How, where is he these days? I I told I you. I don't know because who cares about Jason, Jason Derulo? Derulo? Who cares about his dumbass? People, people who were in California who mistakenly thought he was Usher care about him. No, they care about Usher. That's the issue. <laughs> but Jason, Jason I, I, so anyone who's been following him on Twitter, because I literally went out and followed Jason, Jason Derulo. after this episode, because I wanted to make sure I'd had this, and then people started commenting that they love the Jason, Jason Derulo. Derulo. Oh my god! Oh my god! Um, Jason, Jason Derulo. Derulo is currently <sighs> posting videos. Of him with a fellow singer, I believe, or his friend, could be his friend, I don't know, um, getting uh, baby formula, putting it in a baby formula bottle, 
but acting like they are big thugs who are like doing lines of cocaine, measuring out cocaine. It is actually quite funny. The link will be in the show notes. I highly recommend you check it out because it is hilarious and I love it because who is it? Jason! <laughs> Michael, what's your, what's your thoughts on Jason? Jason! <laughs> Pass. So <laughs> I guess he doesn't want to know where in the world it is. Jason! Jason! <laughs> Michael, as always, it's been a pleasure and a blast to chat with you for totally the hour that we always say we're going to be an hour. It was a journey that we went upon. It was. Better. It was. And for anyone who's watching or still watching or listening to this, remember on Fridays for the next three weeks, we will be releasing movie reviews by the YouTube channel. So head over to Crossboard Interviews with Chris Brown. Scroll down to Cross, uh, Net at the Movies. Uh, movies. We have some great movies coming up this week. Uh, and then we'll have some coming out. And then, like I said, we will be back probably in the middle of March because I'm literally going to, after finish recording this, I'm going to try and get like two or three episodes of Euphoria out of the way. We will be back to talk about Euphoria. Then at the end of the month, we will be talking our Oscar predictions because Michael and I, we are trying to sit down and watch every single Oscar nominated movie out there. I know it's hard for some of the foreign language films, but the top ones, we will be making our predictions. I will not be watching any of the shorts unless someone can find me a link to watch them for free. Cause it's like 20 bucks a pop and it's like a three minute thing. No thanks. Um, I will not be watching the documentary probably. Uh, and we'll see with international film it sometimes it's hard to find them in the US. So I probably won't be watching them other than I'm gonna try and watch Drive My Car. And I think it's Flea mm -hmm. that has gotten nominated for quite a few things. Um, but I'm going to try and get everything. I'm going to try my damnedest to get everything else. We're holding him to it. Uh, I have two movies left to watch and both of those are currently still in theater. So I am looking forward to. Uh, How many do I have left? Oh, he's going to check many. this out. This is this. This is this. I is the have a list. I know. But no, I have a it. list somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's missing in action at the moment. But I, I think there's like 32 when you factor everything that I have not watching versus what I am watching. And it's like 14, 15 of the 32 I've seen. So I'm about halfway there. You can do it. You have 31 days until we record our next episode. So you have one every two days. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. So with that, uh, uh, as always, the links to Michael's Instagram is in the show notes. Scroll down, check it out. Highly recommend it. Um, he talks about, he posts things not on a regular basis, but on a semi-regular basis. Uh, he posts about his other shows that he's on. I really highly recommend you go over and check those out as well because he gives some great commentary on those shows on a weekly basis, not on the monthly basis that we do. But check out the uh, Block Talk with Michael Block. Uh, Mikey Nichols Pate is on there on every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Uh, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast, no, it's not the Cross Border Interview Podcast anymore. It's the Cross Border Interviews with Chris We don't Brown. know her anymore. She's exactly. gone. She's dead. Uh, Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent rest of your day. And remember, guys, Jason! Bye!